Welcome back to the shop. Man, am I excited. Got us a pole saw here. Some of y'all may remember that a while back I did a video a long time ago on a pole saw. The quality of that video was terrible, but the views were high. Uh, I didn't know much about video and editing. You can hear music playing in the background. So we're gonna revisit that today and I'm gonna do a much better video. For those of you that watch that, you're really gonna love this one. I've learned quite a bit about editing and videos. and So let's get over here and get started. This model is an HT-101 adjustable, meaning it will extend out. We're gonna break that shaft down. What I like to do when I start a, a shaft repair on one of these is go ahead and separate our engine and our handle housing from this unit. And then I also like to go ahead and let's get this gear housing off. Now, before we start that, there are three things that you need to pay attention to before you break this down. First thing is, you need to mark which end of this outer tube faces toward the motor. Then you need to mark which end faces toward the blade. All at the same time, you'll look down that shaft. Sometimes you can feel it. What we are looking for is a hidden rivet. Now, the reason that you have to figure out which end goes where is if you'll notice, that's the distance to that end from that rivet. And that's the distance to that end. It is different. That has to do with the direction of those bearings, which we'll get into to make sure that that shaft doesn't slide all the way out from where it's supposed to. So let's get over here and pull this motor off. So to start with and remove that motor and handle, we're gonna start with this handle. You don't need to take this apart. If you look, you see those four smaller screws. You don't wanna mess with them. These two holes here are what we're gonna do. You don't have to take those out. You just wanna loosen them. When that, that handle will move like that, that's good enough. Next, we're gonna, we're gonna loosen the motor clamping housing by removing this screw. Or not removing, we're gonna loosen. Then we should be able to slide both of those off. Sometimes that shaft, inside shaft, will slide on out. Sometimes it gets hung up. You want to make sure you don't bend it or distort it. And that's what that inside shaft looks like. Slide it back in. So we've now separated our motor and handle. We'll lay it out of the way. Now that we have the motor end off, we're going to come down here and we're going to remove the gear head by simply loosening these two screws and sliding it off. So we've removed our motor, we've removed our cutter in. Now we're ready to disassemble this shaft. We're gonna separate this shaft into its individual components. So what we're gonna do to take this loose on the motor in is loosen these two screws. Now, when I pull this apart, there's a couple things that I want you to pay attention to. Uh, it would not hurt to go ahead. This is a strap holder. Loosen it where you can just slide it back out of your way, which that one is broke. When I pull this apart, you're gonna see some bushings and some springs in it. You need to pay close attention to how that's oriented. When you pull this inside shaft out, don't just snatch it out. Try to take it out with all that attached as much as you can because there's some things that we're gonna look at there and it's much easier to see how it went because it has to be put back the right way. So as you grasp it, slide it apart. If you have to tap on it, I suggest you tap very light. Somebody's gonna break that coupler. Now this is a bush and you'll get a better look at a minute, but I want you to notice these grooves. There are grooves that are inside of here that match this groove and this groove. This allows it to slide where it's supposed to be. Now you notice that spring, there are two of these in this unit and there are also two more floating bearings. There's more bearings than that and these bearings are different. As you pull it out, Sometimes those will come with it. Sometimes they won't. All right, right here. I want you 
gonna show you something. You see how that bearing looks on the inside versus that side. That's important that you pay attention. This is what our inside shaft looks like with the springs and components. This one is affixed to the lower end of this tube that slides into your motor. Then you have your spring and then you have another bushing. Pay attention to the way that's facing. And then we come to here and we have another spring and another bushing. Once again, pay attention to the way that's facing. That's an overall look down it. Now you see those two, those are what lines up with those grooves and them bushings that I was telling you about. At this point, you want to mark, I like to use a scribe, put you an M in a couple spots on that shaft so that you know this is the motor end. Now we'll slide down and take the other end off and the upper part of our inner shaft out of the outer tube. Now, same as we slid the, the part that hooks to the motor out of the rear end of the tube, it has to go back in the same way. The inner shaft on the upper end of the tube is the same way. It'll come out of that end and it has to go back in the same way. We're gonna apply the same principle here to remove that shaft that we did on the other end on the lower inner shaft. You're just gonna loosen these. And now if your holes are always bent, the procedure is pretty much the same way. You just may have to do some cutting to try to save some of your parts inside. All right. A couple things here you need to pay attention to. Some models have it when they made changes, some don't. This is merely a lineup bushing. If you notice it's grooved, there's one on the other end. We haven't pulled that part out yet. I'll show you that, but same way it lines up in here and you have to push it back in. So we're gonna remove that by simply sliding it out. Now, the only thing that you have on here is one bushing that's affixed to the end. If your bushings are bad and you're gonna change them out and your shaft's still good, Make sure when you order these bushings that you order you a couple of those rivets. You have to drill that out and change that. That's that part of that shaft. Now, same as we did on the other end, we're gonna take our, scri our scribe and we're gonna put a C in a couple places. And that'll tell us that that's the end that our cutter gear head will go on to. Now we have our shaft assembly broke down into three pieces. This is your inside upper tube. This is what extends out. This is your inside lower shaft. This stays stationary. I'll show you how these springs work when we get to that point. And this is your outer tube that contains everything. Now this outer tube, we're not gonna do anything else to other than maybe clean it. So I'm gonna move it over here out of the way. Now when you go to disassemble the inner drive shaft out of the inner upper extended tube, you wanna look at this end. This shaft extends through. This little ring you see outside is actually a bearing. When we pull this out, you wanna make sure that bearing's free and turns. If it doesn't, you need to replace it. This is what that other inner lower shaft slides into. You'll notice that'll slide back into that. So what I do to keep from damaging that is I get me a wooden dowel. That way the wood will break before the shaft. I put it in here. and I line that shaft up on it. And then just give it a few taps. But there's a liner that's in there. Now usually after you tap that a few times, you'll see that liner start to stick out. And that's what that shaft rides in, this part. 
So you want to pull that out of there. Now on the bottom of that liner or that shaft, you have a keeper, which is simply a snap ring that fits into a groove. And then you have a bushing. And that shaft to slide out of that liner. And that is that shaft and that liner. Now, if yours is not spinning and you haven't seen any damage out of the way too, you wanna check this part. And this is on the other end of that spline shaft we had. This is plastic. That piece of square stock fits up in it. I have seen these strip out. You can buy that separate, knock this out and put the new one in. So that's as far down as we need to strip our inner upper extendable shaft part. Next, we're gonna strip down the springs and bushings off of this other one. And keep in mind what I said about you wanna make sure that that bushing spins. Now I'm gonna show you how to strip out this inner lower shaft. Once again, take note of the way that your bushings are facing and your bearings. Now if you'll notice and remember on the other part, I showed you it was round where that shaft came through. To accommodate the split part on this one, since it's spline, the bearing itself is splined, as well as that bearing and that bearing. So we're gonna strip this apart now, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slide those bearings off of that shaft one by one, remembering which way they are. And we're gonna lay them out in the same direction. Inspect those springs, making sure that they're in good shape. We'll remove that second bearing. Keeping it in the direction that it goes. We'll lay it in there next to that one. Now we'll remove our second spring. And lay it up here with our other spring. Now this last bushing is made onto this shaft. I'm gonna show you something here. We're gonna loosen this and slide this back. You ain't got to necessarily take it off. We're gonna loosen this screw. And we're gonna push that back. All right, now here's another one of those bushings like we found on the other end. Just wanted to show you that. It's got the two grooves. We know that our bearing in there is good because we're moving freely with no grit. So when you remove this part, this spline shaft from here, you have to pull it out of the rear. Show you why. Now you can see that this is a two piece shaft on the rear. If you look right there, you'll see a key or I guess you would call that a circlip that's recessed down into a groove. The purpose of that is when that shaft is, when that shaft is slid together, that circlip catches behind here and keeps that shaft from pulling forward. Otherwise, when you pulled that upper shaft out, it would just pull this out. So we'll just slide that shaft out the rear and keep in mind that the rear of that shaft is two pieces. Unless yours is damaged, no reason to take that apart. And just like the other end, there's a liner in this end. And that is that liner. Now this is what we just disassembled. There's no reason, as long as those bushings are good, to take that down any further. Just so we now have our pole saw shaft completely disassembled into all of our individual pieces, including our bearings and springs. So now I'm gonna show you how to put that back together. So at this point, if you've determined that the inside of your tube is nasty and you need to clean it, I take a, a cup of gas, set it on the floor and set the end of that tube. I have a piece of all thread here that's got a sponge 
on either end. I run that through that with gas four or five times completely through that tube until I get it clean. So now we're gonna put the lower end of that back together and I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to. So we'll take our piece here that connects to our motor and take our line and just simply slide it in all the way. Now we're gonna take our spline shaft, remembering that it is two piece with this end that goes to the motor. You want to lube this shaft. This shaft does not need lubing to be completely honest with you. There's nothing wrong with this. I just wanted to remake a better quality video. But at this point, you'd wanna lube this shaft. I see people put everything from never seize to them to everything else. Uh, these companies usually make stuff for that. You don't want to get too much stuff in there that holds degree, debris, things like that. You know, you could use something as simple as some press fluid. Anyhow, so what you're going to do is we're going to take this spline part. We're going to not use the smooth end. We're going to take this in and we're going to insert it into the rear of our piece. Keep in mind that that bearing is spline, so you may have to work it a little bit to get it to line up. Don't force it. Then we're gonna slide it all the way up. Remembering that that keeper is what's gonna stop it from going too far. All right. At this point, we wanna put our springs and bushings back in making sure that we keep those in the same order they came off. This first spring is gonna to rest toward this bushing on the motor end. So we're gonna slide it on. If these springs are rusted, distorted, or anything of the such, you need to go ahead and replace them. This is a job that you really need to do if you've had a failure before you order parts to see what you need. So now we have that resting against that bushing. We're gonna take our other bushing next and we're gonna keep it in the same direction that we had it. The open end of the bushing will face toward our motor end and that'll encapsulate the end of that spring. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna slide it on. And it too is blind. And then we're gonna slide it all the way down to meet our spring. Much easier if you're not filming and you got both hands. And remember putting these on right ties into these lining up in that tube so that everything goes in right. So we have our first spring and our first floating bushing. Now, when we get done here, I'm gonna show you the purpose and how these bushings work. So we're gonna take our second spring and we're gonna slide it up the shaft to meet the rear of that bushing. Paying attention once again to how that bushing's facing. So now we have two springs and our center floating bushing. Now we're gonna pick up our last bushing that's floating and remember how it's faced. Open in toward the end of the shaft that the motor goes on. Splined in toward the cutter end. Same way you did the first one. You're gonna line up them splines and you're gonna push it home. So that's as far as that'll go together for now. Now I'll show you how those bearings and springs work. When your pole saw is in the closed position and the shaft is tucked inside, what you basically have, and they'll stay inside that tube where here they're gonna flare everywhere. This is sucked up. When you extend it, this expands, forcing those bearings out. And that gives that shaft support down there. And that's how that works. So now that we have that part back together and keep in mind this is your inner shaft on your lower shaft we're going to go ahead now and put this back into the outer tube we're going to put our inside drive shaft into that tube 
for our lower unit that we just put together, which is this piece that our motor goes on. So just for the ease of making it easier, I've put this into a vise. What you wanna do is take your splined end. We have made sure that this is the end we marked our M on that our motor goes on. We're gonna insert this from that end. This is the grooves that I told you about and then the grooves into this. When you put this together, you wanna to line those up. If you got it right, it should slide right in. Let me show you that again. We're gonna line that up. That'll slide in. As you push it, feed your spring into it as you feed it in. Then you're gonna to come to your next bushing. And you're gonna line it up and it's gonna slide in. And then you're gonna feed your spring in. And then this last fixed bushing is the same way. You're gonna line up those grooves while lining up that spring within its recessed area. And then we're gonna push it in. This bushing, you want to push in. Sometimes it goes easier than others. Sometimes it needs a little coercion. Now at this point, you don't wanna go any further on this assembly and there's a specific reason I'll show you. We're gonna work on the internal extended part of the shaft now. Now this is our internal extendable tube assembly. This is what you actually pull out that the cutter end mounts on. We're gonna put it back together. If you've got your old one, make sure your snap ring's in good shape and that your follower's put on. You see that groove in that follower? If you bought a new one, generally this will come in already together on this part with the liner. So first thing we're gonna do is put this liner on the inner shaft that we're gonna slide in to the inner tube that goes into the outer tube. That's a lot of tubes. So to do that, we'll just pick it up with our piece of key stock in our hand. We'll take this liner and we'll feed over it. You wanna make sure and put this liner on or else you can't get the shaft in after you do. And that's what you're looking at. Now, we want to take our bearing in. Turn it the opposite way. Now, if you look at this shaft, you'll see a seam in that shaft. That plays an important role. This groove that I pointed out to you in this bushing needs to line up with that seam. Once you have it lined up, it should slide in and then just take your liner and your shaft all at one time and slide into the tube. Now, once you get it almost fully seated, you wanna turn it around because you want that shaft to come through here Just like that. So at this point, we're ready to put this back into our outer tube. We'll go ahead and take our main shaft and spin it over so that we can put our next piece in. So now we're gonna slide the end, internal extendable part of the shaft back into our main tube. Uh, I'm gonna show you something here. If you remember, if you remember, on this end, I told you not to tighten this yet. I'm about to explain why. You see that piece of shaft, how it's laying to the side, even though it's got the support bushings? That has got to line up with that when you put it together. So, to make that easier, if you'll come down here on the piece that you left loose, and just bump it in. See how it's sliding forward? Now 
now if you notice, it's sticking out the end. So once again, even with this piece, when you slide it in, you want to remember the fact of those line up notches. We are still applying to that. So you're going to line this up with the spline in this bearing first. And then you're going to make sure that those are lined up. And then gently push it in. Shove it all the way home while holding the end of your shaft to make sure it doesn't slide out. You should feel some spring resistance. Now we're going to stop right there and we're going to put this bushing into here by sliding it over the end of our shaft. Depending on how clean that shaft is as to how easy it'll slide. Uh, you may have to gently tap it in a few spots or don't just start slamming on it. You don't want to ruin the bushing. Just give it some taps and then try it again. And just slide it all the way up. Once you get it up there, same principle you've been following. You want those grooves to line up with those grooves. You may have to turn it to get it there. All right, we're making progress. Let me get it over here where you can see what we got. So we've pretty much got our components back installed. We're gonna tidy this up right here. Couple things I want you to be sure of though. At this point is a good time to stop and it's probably hard to see, but make sure that you have it oriented right. On this one, we put C for our cutter in, which is what this is. This is our cutter in. On this end, we put an M for our motor in, and that is our motor in. So now we're gonna go ahead, slide our couplers up on both ends and tighten those down. What I do is go ahead and get it started, slide it together. You may have to wiggle it. Sometimes I'll take my handy dandy rubber mallet and tap it. And uh, this one had already been done. You may not can see it, but a good idea may be before you put it back together, if you're unsure to scribe a mark across it so that you know when it is fully seated and do that. Then we're gonna tighten that down. So now we're gonna put the clamping sleeve on the other end. Same procedure. You're just gonna slide it over. You may have to hold this shaft to keep it from pushing in while you're doing it. And it should go up relatively easy. If not, we'll give it a couple bumps with our persuader. Once again, I can't iterate enough to be gentle. You don't want to break that because I can promise you they don't give them babies away. So now we have that on. Our shaft assembly itself is recomplete. Now all we have to do is reinstall our motor and throttle and our cutter in. So let's jump over and do that. I like to install my cutter in first and there's a specific reason for that. We'll go over that when we get to our motor end of it. So just pick it up. Make sure that line is all the way in and slide it on. You may have to pull it back and off a time or two to get everything to line up. Once again, make sure it's all the way in. Now we're just gonna snug those. Don't tighten them over tight, just snug them. Now we'll turn it around and we'll put our motor end on. Before we can put our motor in on, you have to remember that we did slide this in so that we could line up those shafts. So you wanna slide that back out. Go ahead and snug down that clamp to hold it where it doesn't move. Now once that comes out the other end, you put it up into the unit. Now, the purpose, putting on the cutter in first for me, this doesn't always slide up. So once you do that, you can take a screwdriver. If you look inside there, you can see holes. Just put your screwdriver in there and wedge it. That's gonna be hard for me to show you what I'm doing 
but I'm gonna set that in on the ground with that screwdriver in there to keep that drum from spinning. And while it's sitting on the ground, I'm gonna manually wiggle that chain so that it'll move that shaft where it slide in. I'm gonna put you to where you can see what's going on here. You should hear it click maybe when that happens. Sometimes you can hear it, sometimes you can't. But I'll take it and put it down against something and wedge it. So as we pull that chain over and push down, there you go, you should see it slide in. Now that we know that's seated, we'll remove our screwdriver. Next thing we wanna do is make sure that our motor, our handle, and our cutter head are lined up. Is we're gonna roll it up to where that our cutter head is standing straight up. We're gonna go ahead and snug it at our motor connection and tighten that down. So we've got our motor and our cutter head lined up. Now we wanna line our handle up and then we're gonna retighten it with our two screws. Now, if we've done everything as we should have, <clears throat> this shaft should move back and forth <clears throat> pretty freely. Ours today is gonna be a little stiff because there is some warpage in it. But as you can see, it does move. The final test will be let's crank it up and see if that chain turns. We're not gonna be able to crank it. I had forgot about some other circumstances there. So. But that is principle and detail, how you put that back together. So that pretty much sums that up. I've been looking forward to doing one of these because I've learned a lot about editing. And if you see that other one, you, you'll realize then, look like a redneck working in a barn. I think this one is much better. This, this is a detailed description of how to break that down in the principles. This applies to your HT-101s, your HT-75s, your newer pole saws, same principle, different design, different parts. But if yours is an HT-75 or an HT-101, this does apply to you. There may be a few parts inside that's a little different, but the principle's the same. So definitely pay attention to those points that I pointed out to you there. Uh, I think this can come out a lot better. Appreciate y'all joining me and I'll see you here next time.